OMG, the cosmic ray. Ever wonder how many different methods there are for us to bring information about the universe home? One might consider rovers, satellites in space, probes, and all the techniques we have developed over time. We were able to piece together the jigsaw and using all the information we gathered. In reality, understanding the cosmos is much like trying to solve a complicated puzzle. What if, however, I told you that the cosmos itself is attempting to speak with us and offering us some guidance on how to learn more about it? What if I told you that it constantly sends us DMS? I mean, there are a ton of them. Every second, millions of them arrive on Earth. Cosmic rays are the name for these messages. And we were aboard a flying balloon when we initially proved their existence. It was 1912. Since then, they have continued to astound experts around. What are they, though? What is their origin? What data do they bring along with them? To find out the answers to these questions and to fall in love with cosmic rays, join me on this journey. You won't be able to resist them, I guarantee it. Just to be clear, cosmic rays are a type of radiation, not a type of ray. Despite their name, they are actually high-energy released particles. These tiny atom-sized particles are constantly flying by us and even through us as they fall to Earth from space. You are currently receiving a shower of them. You shouldn't worry too much about them since even though they are hitting us, they aren't doing any physical harm to our body. But occasionally, they can, for instance, make our computers malfunction. Therefore, you can hold them accountable for the computer crash. Because they are secondary products of primary cosmic ray swarms produced in the atmosphere, the particles that are striking us are actually referred to as secondary cosmic rays. These interactions often result in a cascade of secondary particles starting from a single energetic particle. Cosmic rays are made up primarily of extremely intense charged particles like protons, alpha particles, and atomic nuclei like helium and iron, with very small amounts of antiparticles thrown in for good measure. Just how terrifying the discovery of cosmic rays must have been to scientists in the early 1900s is difficult to conceive. These particles had enormous energy compared to all the other particles they had seen up to that time. For instance, a solar photon typically has an energy of 1.4 electron volts EV. As a point of comparison, an airborne mosquito has an energy of roughly 1 trillion electron volts or 1 by 1012 EV, although it is also significantly larger than a single particle. The energy of an alpha particle produced by the disintegration of uranium-238 is 4.27 times 106 EV. In contrast, a cosmic ray proton has an energy of around 1 by 1020 EV. That means a proton can only travel at nearly the speed of light in order to attain that tremendous macroscopic energy. Try to recall the renowned Einstein equation. 90% of the nuclei are basic protons, 9% are alpha particles, and 1% are the nuclei of heavier elements. Stable antimatter particles like positrons and antiprotons make up a relatively small portion of the universe. Research is being done on the specifics of this remaining portion. However, where do cosmic rays originate? Be sure to like or dislike the video before learning the answer to this query so that we can keep improving and making these films better for you, the viewer. Additionally, be sure to click the bell to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of our weekly videos. We are aware that they originate from a location in space. Austrian physicist Victor Hess conducted a series of balloon ascents in 1911 and 1912 to monitor radiation levels in the atmosphere. At the time, scientists believed that the radiation emanated from the Earth's rocks, thus he was searching for the origin of an ionizing radiation that had been detected on an electroscope. With his balloon flights, Victor Hess advanced these measurements. In 1911, Hess' balloon ascended to a height of around 1100 meters, but he observed no essential change in the radiation's intensity compared to that at ground level. 
Then, on April 7, 1912, Hess climbed to a height of 5,300 meters during a nearly total solar eclipse. He reasoned that the source of the radiation could not be the sun and that it must be coming from a source further away in space because the ionization of the atmosphere did not diminish during the eclipse. Hess had found a natural supply of high-energy particles high in the atmosphere, cosmic rays. This outcome was incredible for his discovery, which Hess co-shared the 1936 Nobel Prize in Physics for. Cosmic rays have subsequently been beneficial in physics experiments, notably numerous at CERN. However, despite its discovery more than a century ago, physicists are still unsure of the precise origin of cosmic rays. This is due to the fact that electromagnetic fields actually deflect particles. It is exceedingly difficult to determine where in the universe the cosmic ray began because there are electromagnetic fields in space that are randomly orientated. The reason we can't pinpoint the origin of cosmic rays is due to magnetic fields, according to Julia Jews, a professor at the School of Physics and Astronomy at Ruhr University in Bochum, Germany. She says that during their extensive voyage across space, charged cosmic ray particles are diverted by magnetic fields. She claims that it is impossible to anticipate the precise route of a cosmic ray particle because magnetic fields in space contain local, minute, randomly directed patterns. But this doesn't mean that we know nothing at all about these small space munitions. Scientists discovered in 2017 that cosmic rays originate from extragalactic zones after discovering an excess of cosmic rays coming from one particular area of the sky, 120 degrees from our galaxy center, in a direction that lies outside the Milky Way's disk and cannot be connected to any potential sources within the galaxy. High-energy cosmic rays must have extragalactic origins, the researchers determined. Fortunately, the less energy the cosmic ray has, the less it is affected by a magnetic field. Therefore, by examining ultra-high energy cosmic rays, scientists should be able to further confine the source's position. Astronomers also want to learn more about the origin of high energy cosmic rays, including how and from where they are produced with such powerful energies. After putting all the pieces together, we now know that cosmic rays can be divided into two categories, solar energetic particles, which are high energy particles, predominantly protons, emitted by the sun, and galactic cosmic rays, which are high energy particles, predominantly protons, originating from space. But how do we discover and research cosmic rays? Even though cosmic ray detection has always been linked to balloon flights, the upper atmosphere isn't the best place to study the high-energy particle collisions they cause. Particle physicists went underground to examine the collisions sparked by cosmic rays, using increasingly massive particle accelerators to smash particles together in an effort to mimic the collisions that cosmic rays trigger in the upper atmosphere. CERN's Large Hadron Collider, LHC, which has a 16-mile, 26-kilometer, circumference deep beneath the French-slash-Swiss border, is the result of this quest. The LHC is still unable to match the energies generated by cosmic ray collisions, despite its great size, power, and utility. Another major undertaking was the construction of the renowned IceCube neutrino detector, a neutrino detector erected in a research facility beneath the Antarctic ice at the South Pole. The vertical wells of 60 modules each include spherical geometry detectors. Using a cone-shaped drill that shoots hot water, the wells are constructed. According to Wikipedia, the goal of the IceCube neutrino project is to find high-energy neutrinos. An unknown portion of these neutrinos may have celestial origins, although the majority are produced by the interaction of cosmic rays with the nuclei of the Earth's atmosphere. Statistics on the direction and angle of neutrinos' entry into ice are taken into account in order to distinguish between the two sources. A neutrino arriving from above is more likely to have been created by cosmic rays penetrating into the atmosphere, but neutrinos coming from below, from the bottom of the sea, are more likely to have a different origin. Sometimes, researchers make surprising discoveries. They may not even know what to say in front of their great new find, so they give it strange titles. 
This was the situation with the infamous Oh My God particle. The University of Utah discovered the OMG particle on October 15, 1991, which was a high-energy cosmic ray. Her name stems from the astonishment it created in the astrophysics community because it was the most energetic particle ever discovered that day, with an estimated energy of about 3 by 1020 EV. It was comparable to a baseball traveling at 94 kilometers per hour, according to a criterion. That indicates that it was moving at a speed that was 99.9999999999951% of the speed of light. At that speed, the OMG particle could reach Proxima Centauri, our nearest neighbor star, in 0.43 milliseconds of the particle's own time due to relativistic time dilation. By the time you've finished reading this, it may have reached our galaxy's core from its own perspective. The first instance of what are now known as ultra-high-energy cosmic rays was dubbed OMG. Since the Oh My God particle was discovered, at least another 72 of the same particles, those with energies more than 571019 EV, have also been discovered, providing evidence of the existence of an as-yet unidentified particle accelerator. The identification of these types of particles is a relatively uncommon occurrence because the great majority of particles have energies between 10 MeV and 10 GeV. Finally, we are prepared to address the final query, what kind of signals do cosmic rays carry? Cosmic rays are valuable as communicators because they leave behind signs of their origins. We can ascertain the relative number of elements in the cosmos by examining the frequency with which various particles occur. But the study of antimatter is another area of study where we find cosmic rays beneficial as messengers. A cosmic particle's velocity, trajectory, radiation, mass, and energy may all be determined once it has been discovered, along with whether it is matter or antimatter. Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, a valuable equipment that can measure 50 million particles per day and transmit real-time data about each particle from the International Space Station to laboratories on Earth, was put on the International Space Station for this purpose. These data provide insightful information on antimatter that will help us learn more about it. Therefore, if you gaze up at the night sky, you might be able to make out the ISS, which is where the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer collects the teeny, charming messengers that carry cosmic secrets. Here's where the video ends. Thank you everybody for watching. What are cosmic rays, exactly? Did you find these facts to be helpful? Were you astounded by the OMG particle's enormous energy? Would you like to learn anything else about life on other planets? Please let me know in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you on the channel again soon.